Hey everyone, I am Amanda from Mandy Lynn Plants. Welcome back for another video if you are returning or welcome if you are new. This is a very different type of video for a different style of planner than what I'm used to using. If you are a little confused, you might want to go check out the video that I posted a couple days ago about the setup of this and kind of the reason behind why I am using this. This is a personal size ring binder and today I'm going to be making dividers for it. So they did have dividers at Hobby Lobby when I went to purchase them, but um, they were pre-cut and everything, but they were the like planner babes or planner girls or whatever. And those are just not my style. So I instead decided to just grab some scrapbook paper of some colors and styles that I thought would kind of sort of go well. Their paper selection, is pretty decent but it's not perfect and um, the light pink kind of matches this lighter pink the mint is pretty close and then i just got several grays because honestly i couldn't find any other colored ones that i liked and i wanted to have several different options um i have a feeling that i'm going to want a lot of different sections so i wanted different papers as well i'm going to make as many as i can and i thought it would just be fun to bring you along for the process and then just really quickly, the other supplies that I am going to be using is my paper cutter. I really like this one. It is a Fiskars. And then the um, hole punch that I got the same time that I got the ring bound planner. And then also my laminator. And I just got this off of Amazon, the Scotch brand. It has been holding up for several years. And so I really like this one. So the inserts that I bought are from So Much Crafting and they are 3.75 by 6.75 inches. And I want my dividers to be just a little bit bigger than that. So I am going to make them four by seven. I don't want them to stick out too much more. And the really handy thing with this paper cutter is that it has this arm that kind of hangs out so that you can see where your inch marks are if it's past the six. So I'm just gonna cut all of these at seven. So now I have a sheet of paper that is 12 by seven and I'm wanting to make them four by seven. So I will essentially be able to get three dividers out of this one page. So I'm just gonna go through and cut them all at the four. And I could have made them even bigger than the actual papers, but I don't want them to be too much bigger. I just want them to stand out a little bit. And then I have this extra piece that I cut off that is still 12 by five. So what I'm gonna do is cut this down to seven and then four so that they are all the same. Now, this is the only one actually that I'm not going to use because the grain is different because of how I had to cut it. And in the order of how I'm going to have all the dividers, I'm having this one be last so that I might not have to use this piece. So I'm actually going to stick that to the side. I just wanted to explain how I am cutting this before fast forwarding you through the rest. And actually this stripey one is going to be different as well. And if I would have been paying attention, I would have cut this one better. I cut my wood grain one the way that I wanted, but not the stripe one. I wanted them to be all this way, um, but they are going to be this way instead, but that is okay. So now I have all of my paper. I am going to just go ahead and put them in an order that will be the most visually appealing. Um, some of the things that I want to make sure that I do is alternate between neutral and color. So these, this is the order of the colors that I want. And I also wanted to be sure to not put both of these next to each other. These are the same design, but different colors. So I have them offset to where the two other neutrals are on either side of the pink. So I'm just going to quickly put them in order, just alternating. And I think you will see why in a minute. And so with doing this, there are going to be these two neutrals right next to each other, but they are the most contrasting neutrals, the lightest with the darkest. So I thought that through as well when I was putting these in order. Really, you can do whatever you want. 
I just recommend thinking through these things when possible. I now have 15, which is absolutely more than I need, I am sure of it. Um, but now comes the tricky part. Now we have to cut a space for the actual dividers. So what we need to do is figure out, I want four dividers. So because this is seven inches, we have to divide seven by four. And that comes out to 1.75 or one and three quarters inch. So that is how long each of the dividers are going to be. So I'm actually going to flip these upside down and I am just gonna go through and make little marks and divide up this into the four sections. So I drew marks at 1.75, three and a half, and 5.25. So I'm gonna go through and make those marks on each one of my pieces of paper. Okay, so I have my little marks made on the back, and as I was doing that, I actually realized that I had forgotten to think through that the back of the divider will be blank, or even worse, have these markings on them, so the information about the paper. And I would really prefer to avoid that where I can. So now I need to rethink a little bit. I think what I actually need to do is go through, and I really don't need 15 anyway. So what I really need to go do is just go through and I think just adhere two of the same designs um, so that whenever I go to laminate them, they are the same design on both sides. And then I, so I guess all of the cuts that I just made or the lines that I just made were for nothing, but that's okay. This is the very first time that I've done this and I am learning as I go. So I am going to re kind of order these and then tape them together. I will be using my Tombow permanent adhesive to do so. Oh, and then I have just these. I'm not going to be able to make enough doubles. I do have these and then I have the ones like this stripe is going the wrong way and I think that would bother me too much. I do also have this one. So I think what I'll do is just go through and make these three. I may have to change the order up a little bit since I don't have doubles of the ones with the stripes because the stripes will be going the opposite ways. And I'm only putting adhesive on the two ends. I could do more than that, but I honestly feel that that would be a waste. They are going to be laminated anyway, and so this is really just to make sure that they stay together while I cut them out. So there we go. And as I'm doing this, I realize that I could have just folded these instead of cutting them all out. As I said before, I have never made dividers before. I have never really been in a ring planner. I have kind of tested them out here and there. Um, so this is my very first attempt at doing something like this. And I do enjoy crafty type things. So I thought it would be really fun to make my own dividers and that way I could make them where they were the right colors for the planner that I bought. I just didn't really like those Planner Babe dividers, and so I didn't want to get them. So this is kind of just a fun learning experience. So thank you for joining me as I figure out how to do it. <laughs> I'm also realizing that if I'm cutting out the top, like let's say that this is gonna be the second, I'm gonna be cutting out this piece and so I'm cutting on some of the adhesive, but I think that should be okay. Oh, and I think I forgot to mention, I did not actually spend 69 cents on these sheets of paper. They were on sale for 25 cents each, which, I mean, yeah, they're on sale, and so I might be able to say, oh, it's a good deal, but 25 cents for one piece of paper is still kind of expensive in my personal opinion. Whenever you can buy a really thick, um, like, paper stack, or whatever they're called. The problem with buying a whole paper stack is that I was very specific in which designs that I wanted. So this actually ended up being the better way to go about buying these for this purpose. But just buying individual sheets of scrapbook paper is not always the best idea. 
Okay, so now I have my dividers and we are ready to do some cutting. So I'm gonna go through and I have them in the order that I want them. So I think that now that I'm not doing it on the backs, oh, and I can kind of see my markings a little bit. So I think this is gonna work just fine. I don't know if you can tell, but on the places that I didn't perfectly put them together, I can actually see a little bit of the lines that I made. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and make my tabs as is. And then if I can't see my lines, then I can always go back in with my ruler and figure out what I'm doing. But the very first thing I'm gonna do is make sure that they are in the design order that I want. So far, so good. And then I have the ones. So it's not the same since I only have one of these. Let's see how I can move these around. This is tough because I really didn't want the neutrals next to each other. And I really didn't want my two check board plaid together. I need to think this through. So this is the order that I have decided on. I do have my neutrals next to each other and I do have these next to each other, but I think that is better than having my stripes going different ways, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut into my tabs now. Remember that we made these seven by four and my sheets of paper are six and three quarters by three three and three quarters. So I am going to make just a quarter inch tab. So essentially the dividers will be the same size as the paper, except they won't actually be because the lamination is going to add some thickness too. I just don't want the dividers to stick out too much farther than the paper. So I'm trying to be careful with how much bulk I'm adding. So I'm gonna go back to using my paper cutter. We're gonna try this out and kind of see how it goes. Actually, I already changed my mind. I think I'm gonna make the first snip with my scissors just so that I know exactly where to stop and start. So I am going to use my ruler to do so. So here for this first tab, I only need to make one small cut because it will just be a straight shot. For the second one, I will need to make two snips because we will be cutting out this part and this part. And on this one, I actually have a little bit of pencil marking. And I found that the very tip of my scissors are not very sharp. So I'm gonna use this end, but very carefully just cut into a little bit. And then on this one, this is the third tab. So I'm going to snip here and here. And then this is the fourth, so I only need to snip here. Okay, since I have all of my little snips made, now I'm gonna go ahead and go in with my paper cutter. And I'm going to be very careful to only make a quarter inch cut. And th so that is gonna be just this very first line here. And I'm gonna make sure that my blade starts at the bottom. And I kinda wanna make a mental note of where my snip is here for where I am stopping. And actually, I cannot see where that is as well. So I'm gonna go in and kind of make my snip a little bit longer. I might even try and just make it go all the way there. The hard thing about that is that now I have to line this up perfectly, which is going to be very difficult. Okay, so that got really, really close. And then now I can just use my scissors and do that. So now you can see that I have one tab and again, this absolutely is not perfect, but we are going with it <laughs> because it is better than planner babes. Okay, um, and then I'm gonna go ahead, before I do my paper cutter, I am going to make these a little longer just so that I can see what I'm doing better. Now I want this tab to be stuck out, so I'm gonna cut this one and this one off. Again, I'm gonna line it up with my quarter inch. I might even try and line this up first 
Okay, sorry, in order to see what I'm doing, I literally have to put my whole head in the shot to line it up. So I apologize for that, but let me see if I can do this one without. Oh, went too far. That is okay. Once the laminator runs over this, that will not be an issue. So now we have two tabs. So if you were having a hard time visually visualizing how this was going to work earlier hopefully now you have a little bit of a better idea and i will say that this is easier if you are not trying to film especially if it's your first time okay so i got really really close and now i'm going to go in it with my scissors and just get those corners I figure it's better to just get really close and stop than cut into it again. This is part of what makes your planner your own. At least that's what I'm telling myself. <laughs> this is what's making it mine and nobody else will have the same divider issues or nobody else will have the same, you know, X, Y, Z, fill in the blank. All right, so one more, and this is the bottom tab. So up about there. So I got kind of close, and then I'm going to just use my scissors to kind of meet in the middle. There we go. So now you can see kind of how this looks. So I have the first tab, second tab, third tab, and fourth tab. I am going to do the next four just really quickly. I'm gonna pop my head in and out and just maybe like magic, I will have <laughs> the other four done. Okay, and there we have the dividers. And I am seeing now that the pinks are lining up and my grays are lining up. So I wonder if there's a way that I could maybe kind of flip these around and rearrange them to where they're not the same. I guess I should have thought through that as well when I was going through and making my order. It's just really hard to think through everything. Okay, so one thing I could do is flip these Although then I have the backs and the backs are cut differently. You know, I think I'm just gonna leave, leave it where it is and the pinks will just be together and that's okay. Maybe if I ever make new dividers then I will think through the color and the placement just a little bit more. And one thing that I'm a little bit sad about is that there's so much neutral and not a lot of mint. I really like the mint color, but the inside of my planner is mint. And so once I get them actually in the planner, I don't think I will mind that as much. So I really think that the neutral and just a little bit of pink and mint will be okay. The next thing I am going to do is hole punch them before I laminate them because I'm not sure if this hole punch is going to work with the lamination or not. I've never used the hole punch before. I don't know how well it's gonna work. Worst case scenario, if I go ahead and punch these, I can use just a single hole punch to punch through the lamination, but this will give me um, the guides as to where to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that this is set to the personal size. I only just bought it, so I'm going to get it set here. And I'll try and show you the inside. There are several sizes. There's A5, personal, mini, A6. So there are a lot of options for this little hole puncher. And before I ruin one of the <laughs> uh, dividers that I just made, just in case it's on the wrong setting, I'm gonna go ahead and use one of these pieces of paper to make sure, now I don't know how to line it up is there this must be is it this we're gonna see it might be this little white piece here that you kind of line it up against we are going to that didn't even work we'll 
this like an on off? Yes, it looks like it's locked. So then how do I unlock it? Oh, there we go. Okay, Whew. you have to be like real strong. Okay, so I don't know if you can tell, but it actually pushed it out quite a bit. Whenever it was locked, it was like this. And now that it's unlocked, it released so that I can actually put the paper in there. Oh, good. Okay, it works. <laughs> so now we can look and make sure that this is going to fit. And it is, but it's not quite centered. Maybe I need to have it flipped. Okay, let's try this side now. Maybe if I hold it this way, is that right? No, I need to have it like this. That's how I just had it. Hmm. Is that how I just had it? Yeah, that's how I just had it. Okay, Amanda. <laughs> this is why I'm testing it with paper because for some reason, sometimes things like this, okay, if I flip it this way, it's still gonna be the same though. Right, because then I have to flip it this way and it's still too much room on the end. I want it to be up more. Okay, so let's adjust this. Maybe I will try that. Is that going to accomplish what we want? Or is that gonna to be too much? That's probably too much now. Okay, let's try it like this now to where it's just even with the end. When I said this is gonna be trial and error and I've never done this before, I was not kidding. Okay, that did go the wrong way. The problem is this is like upside down. So it's making my brain do weird things. So I actually do want it more this way. Okay, so then I flip it upside down and put it in there. That is how I want it. So part of the problem is that I do not have it on the actual personal setting. I have it just a little bit further. I'm not sure if you can tell that or not, but I think this little dot is supposed to line up with this line on the personal, and I have it just a little bit off that so that the paper is more centered. So what was happening was that this was sticking out to where the bottom of these little push open thingies are. And I didn't want that. I wanted it to be more centered. And actually now that I'm looking at it, it might be a little too much. Let's go just a little bit back. Okay, one more time. Let's try and see. Okay, that I think is pretty good. Okay, I'm so glad that I tested that now. <laughs> All right, now, here we go. We are going to punch holes in the dividers that I made. Here we go. I'm gonna make sure that it's all the way in and all the way down. Okay, there's one. And two. Yeah, I'm not sure that this would punch through the lamination. It's even kind of having a hard time just doing what it's doing right now with the two pieces of paper. I think I'm gonna be glad that I did this step first. Okay, so now I have them all and before I laminate them, I'm just gonna go ahead, put them in and make sure that that is what I want. And I am coming from an A5 size. If you are unfamiliar with me and my channel, I plan in a Hobonichi Cousin and it is an A5. And this personal size is really good. <laughs> take some getting used to, um, but I think it's going to be good. All right, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and laminate these, and I really won't be able to show that well on camera just with my setup and everything. I can show you how I plan to put them in the pouches. These are just the pouches that come, they're the same brand as my laminator, so I can put two in 
So I will just put one all the way to the edge here and then just make sure that there's some space here with the other one and then I will just cut around it. So this will go in the laminator. This side is sealed and that side will go in first and it will just laminate it and then I will cut around it. So I now have all of my laminator sheets and now I'm going to cut around it but I do want to show you in case you're unfamiliar with laminating and you might not be able to tell but there's a little bubble around and I, I want to be really careful not to cut the bubble. I want to cut outside of the bubble so that the bubble doesn't pop and then the laminator sheets come apart. So there's going to be a little bit of a gap. I will not go around and cut it completely flush with the paper. And I'm going to try and curl my edges so that they're not really sharp and pokey. Laminator, lamination can be kind of sharp. So I'm trying to curve it along my edges. So around the tabs and then also the corners of the dividers themselves. Now along these edges, it's not as necessary, I don't feel, because this is where it's gonna be right up against, because this is the side with the rings. It's mainly these two corners, I went curved and the tabs. Okay, so I have them all cut now, and as I was cutting, I was thinking about, um, originally I was gonna try and use my punch again, but the added thickness here at the bottom is gonna throw it off and the punches won't line up. So I am just gonna go in with my single hole punch instead to punch through the lamination. And after looking for it, I actually remembered that my single hole punch is actually at school in my classroom. So I am not going to be able to finish this video today, but make sure that you check out my setup video it is linked in the cards for you to see how I have my binder all set up. Thank you so much for watching and bearing through all my mistakes as I made these divisors for the very first time. As always, thank you so much for watching. Until next time.